Welcome to the Vikings Horn, the first official podcast of the Nottingham Vikings Ball Hub Club. I'm your host for today, Vikings captain and defenceman Pete Allen. I have with me defenceman Mike Lee. Hello. Hi, Mike. Uh, forward Tyron Anderson. Hello, all. Standard netminder and Sheffield Steelers spy Joel Lindley. Good, good afternoon. And coming at you with a fan's perspective, we've got Andrew Crooks. Hiya. So how are we all, how are we all finding lockdown, guys? Are we keeping busy, keeping fit? It's amazing. Uh, Marvellous. Struggling. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fairly difficult, I think, to keep motivated. Um, staying in the house, you know, for the best part of over, you know, 18 hours, minus you sleep, it's, um, it gets a bit tedious after a while. But, you know, I've got to keep things uh, in perspective. You know, there's a lot of things going on at the moment and definitely for the right reasons. So uh, we just need to, uh, yeah, stick it together and uh, hopefully we um, beat this virus. And that's the main thing, I think, from this all. Would you not all agree? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Hey, well, that's- Pete, yeah. you've introduced us um, as a Viking horn. I think it'd be good to mention Katie Louise Matthews, who uh, who won the competition to name our podcast. And I know if Katie wants to, she's going to be welcome as a guest in the future to one of our hopeful round the table podcasts. But yeah, it'd be just good to shout out to Katie really for a, a good idea, a great idea for the name that we've used. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, congratulations, Katie. Um, we said when we when we bought the the, the competition out and we put it out there we got a lot of people getting in touch with potential names for the podcast and as a group we picked um, Katie's Choice out as the Vikings Horn um, and like I say with the prizes one of the prizes is to come and join us for one of our future podcasts it would have been um, for this one but the situation we're in doesn't allow that but like we say you're very much welcome to come down and, and spend an evening or, or day with us when we're we're performing one of your podcasts in the future. So we'll look forward to having you down with us. Um, but yeah, uh, moving on, a bit of sad news uh, coming out of the world of sport. It's been a, a sad couple of days, really, last last 24 hours. Um, I want to say from all at Nottingham Vikings, rest in peace to Colby Cave of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, he passed away yesterday after suffering a bleeding on the brain. He was only 25 years old, a young talent lost. Um, all our thoughts and wish, best wishes and prayers go out to his family, friends um, and everyone at the Edmonton Oilers um, Ice Hockey Club. Um, also today we have lost motor racing legend Sir, Star- Sir Sterling Moss, um, aged 90 after suffering a long illness. Um, one of the greatest to ever uh, get in a car, uh, winning 212 races in all aspects of motor racing that he took part in. And also most recently, uh, this afternoon, it's been announced that Peter Bonetti, Chelsea Football Club legend, has also died after suffering from a long illness um, at age 78. Um, he's been described as one of the greatest ever footballers to play for Chelsea, uh, and he was part of the 1966 England World Cup winning squad. Uh, so, once again, all our thoughts and wishes at the Nottingham Vikings Ball Hockey Club goes out to their families, friends, and all associated with those clubs. Yeah, really. Uh, so, them, yeah. Um, moving on, guys, um, we want to explain briefly uh, what we're here for. Uh, we're going to be bringing you information regarding our games, uh, training, but we're also going to delve outside of, of the Vikings itself. We're going to talk about ball hockey in general. Um, hopefully, we're going to get reports from games that are going on around the league, um, any rule changes, and how the structure of the league happens. Um, and also, we're going to go outside of hockey in general. We're going to talk sports. Uh, and things happening in life generally, really. So we look forward to bringing that to you as much as we can. Um, so we'll start off with ball hockey. Before we go into our last game, uh, a bit of a report and, and chat about that. Uh, it was a few weeks ago now, but we it, feel it's important to bring it to you. Um, let's describe what ball hockey is to anyone who's, who might be listening who hasn't played ball hockey before. I'll start off by saying, if anyone ever comes to me and asks me what ball hockey is, I will always say to them, well, 
picture ice hockey, take away the ice, take away your skates, you swap the puck for a ball, you take away a large percentage of the physicality, and you've got ball hockey. But I know you guys can probably extend on that a little bit more. So, Mike, I'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'd say is you don't need to spend a lot of money on buying a load of full hockey gear. I mean, basically, we'll, we'll talk about the training sessions in a bit, but if you just turn up with, um, well, <laughs> just shorts and trainers on and T-shirt, we'll supply kit, like a, a stick and gloves, if you give us a bit of advance notice. And really, for just the training sessions, it, it's as little as that. Um, and I think you've covered everything else. Uh, certainly, the, there's no player checking. And um, we're playing with an orange ball instead of a puck on a non-ice surface, which is typically a, a sports hall, I think generally we end up playing in. So, yeah, if anyone wants to add anything else. Joel, uh, uh, Joel sorry, Andrew, just for one second. Joel, uh, um, I just want to ask you, because you're relatively new to the game. You, you've yeah, definitely. You've come down to a few train sessions. Um, what was it that drawn you to ball hockey? And um, what did you like? What, well, what made you come back? I've, I've been a massive fan of ice hockey for since I was... Uh, a small, small child, and I've obviously been, as you said at the beginning, a massive Steelers fan. Sorry to all the Panthers fans listening, um, but you know, um, and I've just loved hockey. Um, I recently moved to Nottingham to to live with my partner, um, and back in back when I lived in Sheffield, I did I did play recreational ice hockey, um, just because I wanted to get into it. I wanted to. I just love the sport, you know. Um, I did play a bit there, and then when I moved to Nottingham, I sort of like put it on the back burner for a bit. Um, I, I just didn't have time for it, really. Um, and then recently, the, uh, an opportunity opened up. There was a, tra a training course at the Nottingham Arena where I met Mike, and I, I signed up to this course and met Mike, and he mentioned to me about the, the Vikings. And I just turned up. And yeah. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, you're going to say, you're going to say something, Andrew. I was going to say, um, if you wanted to improve your fitness, then it's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. And, 100%. And not to underestimate it, actually, because if you've not been to a training session for quite a long while, and then you, so if you turn up to a training session, then you don't turn up for quite a while. You can see a massive difference when you next turn up, because it does make you very, very tired. <laughs> You are going that's, to swear. That's one of the things that surprised me. I didn't realise how how much of a workout it was going to be. Um, you know, I mean, as you said, I'd, I'd stood in as, as netminder for, for the last game that, that, that was played. And even that is just, just an absolute workout. I so, so draining. But, you know, it, it's, it's a good, it's a good way, like you say, a good way to, to keep fit. Good, yeah. Um, Tyrone, me and you have been playing probably, well, we started going down, I think, together um, yeah. back back a few years ago now. I, I wouldn't like to say how, how long ago it was. Um, what is it about ball hockey that's kept you going back? Is it, I mean, something for me that I always take out of ball hockey is it is something different. Like, there's so many people, I, I'm not from the Nottingham area, so a lot of people don't, around my area don't really see or appreciate what it is so i have to i often have to explain to people what it is what what about the game do keeps you going back and 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 what do you what do you talk to people about when you're talking about ball hockey what do you mention about it well i, I think if i talk about ball hockey i think it's the, the fun element of it all um you know you can you can meet lots of new people around uh, playing ball hockey whether that be playing uh, ball hockey with your friends, i.e. yourself, Pete, um, and a few other people for the Vikings team, or just meeting new people in general. I mean, I've been fortunate over the, the number of years I've been playing now to, to play for a, a lot of other teams. And, and it wasn't just to go and join other teams, but it was actually just to explore something different and get to know different people. And there's a competitive edge to it as well. So anyone who thinks that you just come down and it's just a game, it's a game, but everyone wants to win. And, and that's, you know, the competitive edge of every game is still there. And, you know, everyone just leaves it on, on the deck as such or in the sports hall. So, you know, once we finish the game, we all shake each other's hands and, yeah. you know, we forget about it. We share beers together and go from there. So for me, it's, 
it's just the fun element of it and, and most importantly why I'm doing it, I'm keeping fit. So, you know, I think, I think, a, what, you're, I think what you're mentioning there is, is very important regarding um, the camaraderie that sort of goes on around ball hockey. Um, where it has its serious aspects, obviously it's competitive. It, it, although you tell, it's not as physical as things like ice hockey, it, it is still a physical game and you come into contact with your players, etc., etc. We all, yeah. the, the, the friendliness around the game and, and is massive and, and everyone does sort of get on. Um, and like I say, after a game or a couple of games or a tournament, you can all go out um, afterwards and, and have a good time, go out for meals with, with teams and, and, and as, yeah. a, as a team. Yeah. Um, so I think that's important for anyone who'd be listening to this who hasn't played ball hockey before, who'd want to, want to maybe come and try it, is... It's a friendly atmosphere, and all it, all people are welcome. It's not; it doesn't discriminate or anything like that. You, you you can all take part. Would you all agree with that? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. It's very, 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 very new to the sport. If anybody does like ice hockey or is a massive fan of ice hockey and you want to give it a go, they don't plan to the ice. Then come down to one of the sessions on on Friday night. When we get when we get out of lockdown, definitely show your face it's good fun it's you know everybody that that goes down there great great people you know great stuff yeah definitely definitely agree and definitely it's recommend to, it open to any level of fitness as well um or age or sex i mean at, at the end of the day anyone can come down um yeah absolutely and of course Excellent. the fame, and of course the fame, fortune, and women, which is what we all do it for. Oh, oh obviously that's why we're involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So, um, moving on, we're going to talk about our last game. Uh, I mean, fortunately, it ended Sorry, with seven four defeat. Yeah. Pete, can we just mention the that we we train on um, a Friday night um, between? Yeah, I have that. I have that in. Uh, so seven and eight between seven and eight thirty on Friday nights. It's at the Nottingham Sports and Fitness Centre. So that's down at uh, Farnborough Road at Clifton. And there is more information on our website as well if you want to have a look uh, and get in contact on Facebook as well if you want to come along to a session. Yeah, spot on. Thanks for that, mate. Um, so moving on to our next game, uh, to our last game. Sorry, um, we don't know when our next game is, so no point talking about that. Um, <laughs> It ended in a 7-4 defeat versus the Hull River Kings. Um, we'd already suffered defeat early on in the season uh, to the same opponent. Um, it was strongly considered going into the season, uh, Grizzly Bears were going to be... They're expected to, to win this league, basically. Um, and it would be between probably between ourselves, Hull and uh, Nottingham Hawks as to who we're going to fight and um, fight to go with for second place. Um, this ended in a 7-4 defeat. Now, we were hit um, by the news earlier that week uh, that Morgan, our um, usual netminder, was, was ill um, with some disease. That it was not coronavirus, so that's, that's fine. He's now, he's now well and better. Um, but this meant that we were a netminder short as we didn't currently have any cover. Now, in steps our man, Joel, Okay. Um, Joel, have you ever played in goal before? No. Nope. Never. So Never. I just want you to I just want you to explain and, and well give us a your opinion on, on what made you decide you were gonna go in net. Because let's 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 set this set straight. You weren't you weren't signed up to play for us, however, we can call on you to be yeah. uh, an emergency goalie because we hadn't you hadn't come down and, and signed up with us before the um, the the sign-up deadline, let's say. Yeah, I think I, I think because Benny it. said that I, uh, Benny said that I just missed the sign-on period for the remainder of that season. Um, so obviously I was a bit gutted about that, and I think my first training session went quite well, and it seemed that I'd, I'd fit quite well in the in the structure of how how, how you guys play hockey. So it obviously very upsetting for me that I, I couldn't get into the team, and obviously when this opportunity arose, I thought it was a good opportunity for me to. To sort of give my my input and, and try and do something for for the team while I could, sort of thing, yeah. and obviously it gave me a chance to 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 get the kit on and and sort of play for the Vikings. I mean, I'd never played in goal before. I mean, Jamie brought the kit 
on the Friday. So the game was on the Sunday. James brought the kit on a Friday. Um, and even putting the kit on was a struggle, man. Like, it, I've been there. I was sweating. I was sweating before I'd even got the kit on. Like, it is such a difficult job. And if you if you look at a goal, a netminder, and you just think, oh, he's just stood there. And it's that is not the case at all. It's such a draining position. Like, that's off to Morgan. He does it every every week. Like, I, well, well, to be honest, mate. Um, I mean, it was an outstanding performance. It was big of you to, to step in and do it in the first I, I place. I think I did all right. <laughs> you did an absolutely fantastic job. I mean, I think anyone, I think anyone who who hadn't seen you play before in goal, uh, or hadn't or didn't know you, wouldn't have been able to come away from that game saying that you'd never played in goal before. I think you put on a fantastic performance, and and it was it was noted uh, by. Um, fans of both our team and members from the opposition uh, and, and their fans also are commenting on the day yeah. and you quite rightly got um, our play of the game uh, come the end of the, of the day uh, and once again well done for that it was a massive massive respect to you and uh, it helped the team big time and, and again uh, it was a 7-4 defeat uh, but it was by no means uh, a disgrace to the team or, or yourself so once again, yeah. thank you, Joel, for that. Um, and Can I just again, clarify that? I thought Joel was going to buy everyone McDonald's if he had a shutout on the day as well. KFC. KFC, yeah. I still KFC, KFC yeah, yeah. I mean, we still went to KFC, but I mean, <laughs> I didn't see anyone getting their wallet out. But you know what? We, we, he, he, we, we thought in, in the circumstances, he, he... You should have all bought me KFC. Yeah, we should have, we should have probably bought him one, let's be honest. We um, I just want to touch on... I just want to touch on the game itself. Um, Tyrone, uh, you were playing alongside uh, as a forward. Uh, Andrew, yeah. you were there um, as our ever-present supporter. Um, the game started off really well for us. Uh, we actually took the lead. Um, yeah. And, and for that first, for the first few minutes, I thought we were we were on top and well deserved the lead. Um, I thought the the news that. Um, we were not having our usual netminder in between the sticks uh, had got out and, and was known by the opposition earlier that week, uh, which is fine. I think I think members of our <coughs> staff had, had, had told them, so that's that's fine. But you could tell they were looking at taking shots from quite deep just to test you early. But other than that, I thought we were working working their defence and their netminder quite hard. The netminder, by the way, also had an outstanding game, it has to be said. And I've been critical um, after our previous game against Hull that we didn't really come out of the box <coughs> even for the first two periods. Um, we, we were quite slow and we didn't seem to want it as much as them. I couldn't say that about this game. I thought we were a lot better. Um, unfortunately, after, the, after we went one mil up, we, we lost three to four goals quite in quite quick succession. Maybe unfairly. Um, I think we, I think we just got caught a bit cold uh, once we took the lead. Uh, yeah. Tyrone, what, what would you say about the, that opening, opening period, especially? It, it started off so well, but then seemed to go wrong. Yeah, well, I, I think we had a, a fantastic start to the game. Uh, we came out of the blocks, ran hard, uh, was moving the ball around really well. And we noticed the weakness on their netmind, which we, we tried to exploit. And, and that's where we got the first goal. Um, obviously, for the purpose, they might be listening. I won't, I won't say well, it's for future games, but that's, that's what we found. I think, like you're saying, Pete, is, is they knew that we what, didn't have our normal netminder in. And, and Joel did a fantastic job to, to step up to the plate and, and go in there. A, you know, commendable thing for him to do. Um, and I think they just they thought they were just going to shoot from wherever they needed to from and, and not actually take the game seriously at one point. Um, and I think we then started to try and, and, you know, counteract that a little bit. And we should just continue playing our own game. And that's when I think we started conceding from there because then we wasn't playing our game. I think that that was what I put on the first period. I definitely thought I definitely thought the goal we scored early was um, a wake up call uh, for for the opposition. Position. I thought they they woke up after that and um, they they realised. Hey, let's be honest. If you're two days before a game, you hear 
they haven't got a netminder. Um, they're going to have someone in net who's never played in net before. As a, as a club and as, as a team going into that game, you're going to have one or two, maybe more than not, thinking, well, all we need to do is shoot and we'll score. Yeah. We'll yeah. score one or two. Um, I'm not saying that was necessarily the case with them, but I just felt like that first goal we scored woke them up a little bit. And then I did, I did notice they then started running in close to the goal and, and getting shots off closer um, and making more hockey plays, let's say, to create the goals. Would, would, yeah, would that, Andrew, from, Andrew, from a fan's perspective watching, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think, I think they, did, they underestimated uh, Vikings at the beginning. But I think, yeah, that, that first goal, they, then they started trying to play and they were, they were shooting from, from the halfway line, the red line, and then backing it up. They were chasing the, the ball in. So it wasn't so much the build-up play. It was them long shots, chasing the, the ball, trying to turn the defence over. And I think um, when, when you have got a, a new keeper in who you don't really know how they deal with the ball being hit at them or where they're going to rebound it to, you're all, all, already on the back foot because you're trying to, to guess what the keeper is going to do. And also with them putting the ball behind you, you're having to think, or looking over your shoulder where the, where the forward is. And I think that was one of the problems that, that Vikings had was that when the ball was going behind, um, both, both D-men sometimes were running after the same ball. So then your outlook, your, your first pass out isn't on straight away. So you're having to look for that pass. Um, and I think Vikings did very well. But I think that was one of the problems is that when you've got a new, new netminder in, then, yeah, like I said, you don't know where they're going to put the ball out to. Um, and kind of, I think communication was key. And there was some good communication. But I think, like I said, we're having a new net minder and it didn't kind of give you that ump to take the game to them, almost. I think, I was, I think, in, I think in all honesty, yeah, that we went into that game not expecting a lot because of... we. I, I'm a new keeper. We sort of went into that game expecting anything other than a loss was a bonus sort of thing. So yeah. I but think that's, that that ideology sort of flowed through, and not not anyone's fault in particular. I just think it's sort of with them not like as you said, not taking the game seriously, that like shooting from quite far out, and you know it it stopped us playing our game. And I think I think we we panicked about that. And, I, know, I think. I think um, Sorry, I was just going to say equally at the same time now, but I think as forwards, I, I, you know, myself and my other forward colleagues, I hope won't, won't mind me saying this, but I think we had to be a bit critical of ourselves there because with you being a new netminder, Joel, uh, which did, again, a fantastic job, I think it was up to us to make sure that we wasn't stopping them long shots getting in. And, yeah. and I think it starts from there, really. You know, it, it, Every game, we would make sure we, sh we closed down them long shots. And if that was going to be their gameplay, then that, we needed as forwards to make sure that our shifts were shorter to stop yeah. them from going in and I think I think at that point of time you know coach Benny told us don't get them shots in and, and we allowed a couple in early doors um, you know and, and that set the stores from there and, and we as forwards needed to look at ourselves and you know rightly so at the end of that period we were told to make sure that we're closing down and we're, we're working as a team to make sure that we're stopping them shots from going in because that's that's the job of any forward to stop, stop um, shots coming in would you not all agree? Yeah 100% and I think when we in that period of play where we went from one nil up to I think four one three four one down, um, from a defensive point of view now, for what I'm talking about is we did make some sloppy plays and and myself I was probably guilty of that more than anyone for uh, that passive play. We, we found ourselves playing um, sloppy balls across our own net, um, and they just seemed to be. For five to ten minutes there uh, in the game, there just seemed to be a bit of panic um, when we had the ball on our sticks. And instead of playing hockey, we sort of, I don't know, there was a feeling of panic there and, and that sort of reverberated around the, the team. And, and instead of playing our hockey, we were making sloppy mistakes. And um, I, I think that cost us there. Um, I just want to move on into a bit further down to the game now. Because um, we went 4-1 we went down and then we started to come back into it. Now, 
there was an important part of the game which I personally didn't realise had um, transpired, to be honest, where I think I've got hold of the ball in my own my own um, half. I've, I've took it past a couple of players and then off balance, I've shot and, and the ball, all I've heard is a ping on a bar, okay? And... I'm blocked. My vision's blocked by two D men. I, I I didn't see. I think my head was down after I shot as well. Keep my balance. Um, Andrew, uh, it was Andrew. It was you who came to me uh, or shouted down to me when there was a stoppage in play, saying that actually went in the net. And um, afterwards, there was also a couple of other people that are watching who had also uh, mentioned that the shot had gone in. I couldn't say whether it had a knock because I didn't see it, but how, how sure were you that? And bear in mind, I think this, this, came at, this came at a point where we, I think we even got it back to 4-2 or 4-3. Well, it obviously, it obviously, it definitely went in. Um, but when the, it was on, obviously, the, the refs are trying to run up, so you can't blame the refs. Um, and it, it went just inside the post, so it wasn't an obvious hit the back bar and come back out. It was just inside the post and came and kind of bounced back onto his pad and back out. So it was easy to miss. But obviously in Sheffield, when you're up in, up in on the almost concourse level thing, and then you could see it from there. But refs didn't give it, kind of, yeah. Yeah, 100%. And I thought it was important because um, I'd been told this uh, and I went over to the refs again during the stoppage in play and I didn't mention them. goes, well, I'm being told that actually went in. Um, but I thought the guys on the day did a, a decent job. I, I, I mentioned before I brought it up that in respect, of, I always respect the officials as we should do. Um, you're doing a great job. This has been mentioned to me. What, what was your insight? And what, what did you see? And, and their opinion both was that it had come off the bar. I, as a player and as captain, I have to accept that. Um, it was unfortunate if it was to have gone in, it could have changed the game a little bit because of the position and scoreline at the time. Um, but I mean, we, we, we lost the game 7-4, so I'm not going to turn around. I won't going to turn around and say you've cost us the game. It was just one of those that, one of those episodes in the game that it might have gone one way, that to, it might have helped us a little bit, but it didn't. So I think we all have to move on. And, and, and I, I, like I say, I never even seen it. It just went off the end of my stick and I heard a ping. So it, it, we'll move on from there. Um, as, as for the rest of the game, like I say, we got quite close. I think we, am I right in saying we got as close as 4-3? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was 4-3, wasn't it? And then, and again, and then they, they pulled away. We, we got one back, I think, at 5-3 to make it 5-4. It might be 6-4. Apologies, it was, it was a few weeks ago now. Um, but then they, they got those insurance goals to, to, to come away the 7-4 win. Again, I just want to mention um, the fact that the, the River Kings were, were brilliant in, in victory, let's say, and in complimenting. Uh, the performance of our net miner Joel um, and and the team as well. Uh, in, in I would just like to say it could have been more than seven. I did make a few good saves, you know. Oh, a lot of good saves. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there were no cameras there to, to capture it. But you know, no. And, and also, I just want to add as well that the River the River Kings uh, net miner had a, a fantastic game. Also, it was, it was a great game for both net miners and. And um, we, without them, it would have probably been a lot, a lot of higher scoring game. So well done to both of you. Um, moving on, um, Andrew, from um, I want, to, want your opinion from a fan's perspective. One thing I've took away from this season now it's come to an end is the fact that I, I feel like we've been a line short due to injury uh, and other reasons especially on these key games against teams like Hull. Um, would you say that was something that we need to improve on next season? Availability, signings? Uh, um, to, to I'd say, yeah, no, I think you need a consistent team. So t players that have played together week after week and gone to training and trained together because there's no point of turning up to a game and trying to mix and match players. So I think it has to be consistency and learning to play with each other and knowing what each other are going to do because there's no point of turning up to a game and expecting it to all click. Yeah, 100%. Anyone else got, anyone want to add to that? 
Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, not taking anything away from Hull's performance, uh, we were short that weekend. There were quite a few players missing. Yeah, and, and we, 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 that was the case in the other game against them also. Again, look, I'm not, I'm not here to make excuses. I, I felt like we had the players there um, to win both games. Uh, we didn't. Um, and again, like you say, it's not taking anything away from Hall's victory. But I feel we were a line missing that we would, would have been there from making the games close, especially the first game. I thought fitness-wise and line-wise, we would have, would have at least won one of those games. Um, uh, Tyrone, Joel, would you would you agree or disagree with that? I say I'm, I'm quite new to the team anyway, so uh, I'll let Tyrone answer that one. Is, when he takes himself off mute. Yeah, when he takes himself off mute. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think we just need to. We just we had the the the, the people there. We, like you say, we're just a slight bit short. We had the fitness there, and and the thing is with their team, they're they're very big and strong, and 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 you know, and we've got the running, we've got the legs, and we we could have had it. Um, I just think, yeah, I think back to Andrew's point. I think you know, and again, I look at myself in this one. I think we need to maybe train a lot more together, uh, understand each other's plays, and 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 it will come together. Uh, but I think we've got the the nucleus of a, a very strong strong team. Uh, we can all improve. And, and we've shown before that we, we can beat the best of teams out there. We just need to make sure that we're all on each other's um, wavelength. We're all running as a team and, and we're just having them short shifts and, and, you know, just playing hard, really. Do that and we can beat anyone. 100%. And um, in terms of getting new players in, Mike, you, you've someone who's been quite instrumental in, in trying to get players into the club, um, as, as you did with Joel here. Um, yeah. How, how's, how's the recruitment going? Well, getting the net minder for the last game on the bad start. <laughs> that was fantastic, yeah. Spot on. Yeah, I mean, we've had a few guys come along and uh, we've got our, uh, a new Austrian import, uh, Walter, joined us last season. That wasn't my doing. I think he joined of his own volition. But um, yeah, <laughs> I, think that, I think what you're talking about, getting a core of a bigger core of players. What we've had this season, we've had the same guys turning up for training week in, week out. But it's been the same few guys. And I think the key will be when hopefully the season starts again is we get a bigger core of regular attendees at that training session and get a bit of chemistry going between those guys. And it's going to make a difference when we step out into the court. We're going to play more as a team. Definitely. You look at the best, you look at the best sides um, in, in ball hockey and you can just tell that they've they played one. They played each other, with each other for years uh, on matches, but I think more importantly, they trained with each other um, like regularly. And you can tell by the way that they play. And um, back when I played in teams um, that have trained regularly as as a, as a whole as lines, you know, we've been successful. So that's something that we need to definitely get um, a grip on uh, with with the Vikings. And I think we've, I think that's possible. Um, we, we just need to sort that out a bit in, in, in the team. Um, you just mentioned uh, there about Walter, Mike. Uh, I just want to I just want to mention quickly. Uh, there's also tournaments uh, that take place throughout the country um, throughout the whole year, um, and the teams take part in these tournaments from all around the country, uh, from and up Scotland, Wales, uh, whoever applies to take part and. Um, you, you and yourself and uh, Walter, Mike, uh, took part in the Fantastic Fours in Gateshead uh, quite recently. We did. Uh, the start of the year. Um, just give us a bit of an insight on that. Um, it, I know it's a very well-run tournament and, and very enjoyable to play in, as I've done it twice myself. But just uh, describe your experience there for us. Well, basically, uh, me and Walt, we went along uh, as much as anything to get a bit more experience because we acknowledge we're both fairly new to ball hockey. I mean, you know, we've been playing for probably less than a year now. Uh, so we thought it was a good opportunity whilst there weren't other games on to, to go and get a bit of uh, playing experience and, and really appreciative to Glasgow Phoenix for giving us the opportunity to join them uh, and represent them for the weekend. So uh, it was myself and Walt was the only Vikings like travelling up, but obviously 
there's a few Vikings sort of playing in the Glasgow team. So what do I think? Um, I'd say it was a great experience. Uh, the, the hardest bit for me was the big breaks between games because old men like me and Walt were both in our 40s. We're, we're really <laughs> sort of stiffening up, you know, when there's like an hour or two break. And it was uh, that was quite difficult when you had several games in the day. It was also an eye opener to see the standard. I mean, I watched uh, I watched a couple of London Jets games, and they're made up predominantly from Canadians, Americans, and some Slovaks as well, I think. And indeed, I think some of these guys have even been selected to play in the Worlds. And uh, wow, I mean, the quality it was just unbelievable. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Is uh, they're, they're, they're great to watch. Ac- accuracy of passing, I'd say, uh, and there was just a constant barrage of well aimed hard shots on goal i mean geez i wouldn't want to be joel if i was if i was netminder in that game but uh and also the fitness of the guys uh you know it was just another step up but it, it was a really good day and me and walt managed to pick up um points as well for for glasgow which we were absolutely chuffed and glasgow phoenix uh, qualified for the middle group on the second day and uh, i say really wanted to thank the uh, matt and the glasgow guys for giving us the opportunity to to go and play with them the only thing we didn't do which we might do more of next time is go out and enjoy some of the uh, evening session as well. Well, I was going to say, I mean, you, you were playing in a tournament in Newcastle, one of the um, one of the one of the quieter areas of the country. I mean, what what would you do on an, an evening time in Newcastle, eh? And um, what would you possibly do there? Go and have a quiet cup of tea somewhere, I suppose. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think you've opened the the floodgates to a potential opportunity to have a, a Viking road trip up there. Hundred um, percent. Well, it's got a van. I think you can lend us, and you know, maybe that's something we maintain here is to uh, go up there on mass and and put in a Vikings team. Yeah, well, well done to your boat. Um, it. It's also it's also just worth mentioning as. Um, Regarding ball hockey, uh, we didn't probably mention it earlier on in the podcast that there is a road there to go and uh, represent Great Britain um, or any other or other country that that you may be from. Um, there's trials where you go down and, and trial for the for the Great Britain national team, and then there's tournaments held throughout Europe. Um, Slovakia is an example where they go and, and play and, and play in front of um, quite large crowds. So. There's always that incentive there for you as well if you're, if you're new to ball hockey. Yeah, I'll do that um, in the second year of playing. I'll play for GB, yeah. Well, that's the aim, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> that's a new netminder, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, as uh, Mike mentioned earlier on in uh, the podcast, uh, there's more information on the Vikings and ball hockey in general, including how you can come down and train with us um, and it's all available at our brand new website. It's www.nottingham, spelt N-O-T-T-M, vikings.com. That's N-O-T-T-M-V-I-K-I-N-G-S.com. So go and give that a visit. Player profiles, um, information on our next game, past games, photos. It's all being done, so you'll enjoy a, a look there. Okay, moving on. We're going to speak briefly about the Nottingham Panthers. We're, we're all Nottingham Panthers fans here, except for one, who's the uh, Steelers spy. Um, but this, this, this subject affects, affects uh, the Sheffield Steelers as well. Um, the Elite League got cancelled early, uh, based on the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, rightly so, I think we can all agree. Um, now, there's been a bit of, there's been some disagreement with the latest news regarding season tickets should there be refunds issued? Should should there be games given for free for next season? Um, how do we see this? Now, I'm going to pass this on mainly. I have an opinion on it, but as I'm a non-season ticket holder and I didn't attend too many games last season for various reasons, I'm going to pass this on to Mike first, uh, your opinion on, on, on this, on okay. how it's been handled by the club. Uh, well, I've got two, two sort of views on this, or two viewpoints that I can... Uh, understand. I mean, I'm a season ticket holder, and for me, I'm going to be kind of happy with any hockey uh, going back. Hopefully, later this uh, later this year. So it's not ideal, and I guess the club have done what they can do, and um, not to sort of take money out of the club. They've they've made the sort of uh, alternative offer of some pre-season games. It's not perfect, but personally, I'm okay with that. 
Uh, I accept that the standard of hockey probably won't be fantastic because we're not going to have a full roster probably and the team maybe isn't going to be gelling or none of the teams will be. But I, I'm still, I'm, I'm sort of up to, I'm up for watching that and the um, also the, the, the Magic 5 tournament as well. So I'm just really keen to get sort of back to some hockey. But I can fully understand that if you've got like a family for all season ticket holders, maybe because of coronavirus, you've, you know, you've been impacted with your job. I could understand that you'd want the option of a refund because, you know, that money might be really, really valuable to you at the moment. So I can kind of see two schools of thought, but my, my, my final comment on that is as a club, I want to see us bring back some of the, the, the really cracking players that we've had last season. Uh, and I think any of the other stuff that's going on could impact that then that would be really disappointing because, you know, I don't want us, I don't want us affecting the longevity of the club and the, the, the team that with the core that we're, f we're forming with uh, our, our new coach and director of hockey. Andrew, uh, also, did you hold up? Are you, are you in agreement with that or disagreement? I agree with the, the season for, so you get pre-season games for it, but playoffs is totally different to a magic five competition because I just think that one of the reasons you go to the playoffs is because the team's battled all year to get there and I just don't think it's it's right to kind of replace it with a pre-season tournament where players haven't really gelled or you don't have you may not even have a full team out so to pick to be paying that amount of money to go and watch that kind of hockey I just don't don't think it's really value for money to be yeah to be paying that amount for a pre-season tournament um but with the season ticket and being given the pre-season games i'm i totally agree with that i think the club so of, what, what would you have done instead of the of the uh, magic five sorry maybe a tournament at christmas where where the teams have actually started playing together there's that chemistry you guaranteed to have all your players in so kind of and I don't know how the league are going to make it fair to, to because that game is going to be put towards the league and who's going to win the league and it comes down to if somebody like a Belfast or a Cardiff end up playing one of the Scottish teams who aren't as good as your, your Sheffields your Nottingham's then they're getting they're almost getting two points and a win for free almost. So if it came down to the end of the season and your Cardiffs or your Belfast or your Sheffield or your Nottingham's needed two points to win the league and a team's played in this Magic Five competition and they've got their two points but have, but have played a lower quality team to get them extra two points and a team like, let's just say Cardiff have to play play us play Panthers or Panthers had to play Shefford and one of us lost and that was that was a, the final two points that either team needed to to win the league I just don't think I don't know how you can make it fair so, well it's it's a funny one this one for the for the magic weekend I I think it's a good idea if I'm honest with you um, because for one, there is a refund and offer for people if they want that, but also it's it counts to a league, so it's a league format, and I think it'll be a good way at the start of seasons for hockey fans to get back together, and actually hockey fans are quite reasonable people anyway, so I, I think to be fair, the majority of hockey fans would still go if possible, and they're able to, so I think it's a it's a it's a good replacement to. Um, to the playoffs but I understand Andrew's point of view in terms of that you work so hard to get to the playoffs so you've got that part of it as well on the other hand the Panthers thing I think Panthers unfortunately I'm going to be a bit of a killjoy on this one because I think Panthers have been uh, have disengaged uh, fans for a number of years now unfortunately and I think it's due to how they've acted um, in the last couple of seasons why people might not, too be, might not be happy in terms of how they've come to the decision around how they're going to divvy out the rest of the games. You've got a couple of things that might make a good point in terms of you've got a four, family of four and whatever, and it's not in their release, in their press release, there wasn't many considerations put to that in terms of what you can do. It doesn't really sit 
easy with me and the fact that you've got four or five games remaining and, and they have told you automatically near enough that you're going to have pre-season games because that's what the Panthers organisation has been about recently. They've been about it not being about for the fans. And I look at other clubs, I look at Steelers, I look at, you know, uh, Devils. In terms of how they're acting with their fans at the moment and, and they're, they're going about it, it, it's, you know, if I was a Steelers fan at the moment, if I was a Devils fan, I'd actually say, you know what, keep that money. Keep it. Because you know what? They give back to the to, to their fans. And I don't think the Panthers organisation do, unfortunately. Um, I see I see many games whereby um, you know Steelers are offering five pound tickets to their to, to to their fans. And and you look at the, the Challenge Cup last season, the, the tendencies at the, the arena was shocking. You know, why not just say, you know what, we're not going to give you pre-season games, but we're going to give you a competitive game and that be the Challenge Cup. The fact that they've put pre-season into the press release, I think, automatically is disengaged the fans. I think it's just a typical way which the Panthers organisation have been working the last couple of years. OK, and you made a good point there regarding, I think, um, the Sheffield Steelers, uh, when when this and Cardiff, because when this first got brought out and um, the news came out regarding what the clubs were doing, I didn't see a lot of complaining from Sheffield Steelers fans, particularly. Um, they were happy, yeah, keep our money, and, and I've seen that quite a lot on, on social media. And I, I wondered what the difference was, and number of games. And I think you've explained it quite well there. Joel, as a Sheffield Steelers fan, um, I know you don't. I know you've not been to too many games. Yeah. But how how do you feel about that? If you if you spent bought a season ticket or you'd, you'd spent money on the club, um, you know, if 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 the clubs treated you the right way by putting on offers for you to go to various games, yeah, definitely. Uh, are you? Are, I mean, I used, are you then I used to be a season, to... Ticket, season ticket holder when I was younger, and the supporters club for the Steelers is a really really good like there's, there's a good vibe about it. Everybody's you know it's very very it's very involving, you know, everybody, everybody, I mean, we used to just do, like, they used to have, like, signing sessions at, like, the, uh, I think it was Brannigan's or something in Sheffield, they used to have, like, big signing sessions where you could go and meet the players and stuff like that. This was really, really, like, there's a, a very togetherness about it, or, which, um, which it, it was really good. I mean, I've not heard much about this, the season side of it, from the Steelers, but what I, I did see yesterday, um, I don't know if the Panthers are doing the same, but anybody that bought tickets to the playoffs, they're offering refunds. And if you don't want a refund, you, the tickets are valid for the Magic Five Tournament. So I don't know. Like, I mean, I've, I've, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I've not read much about the Magic Five Tournament. That's, that's fine. Um, I've, I've only seen snippets of it about on, on the Steelers pages and what have you. But just on the face of it, I think. If you want a refund, you can get your money back. If not, the, the, your tickets are still valid to, to some sort of event. And I think that's that's for the playoffs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Magic yeah. Magic. So, so this is. I'm going to come at it from. Um, so, and again, I will stress, I have not got a season ticket for the Nottingham Panthers. Uh, I, I attended a handful of games last season, um, and I've, I've been following it from afar, basically. So. Um, and I also want to stress the importance that of, of people spending their hard-earned money on to go and watch their favourite club play. People will, will spend money uh, on season ticket, season tickets, sorry, which they might not. It, it might not be financially doable for them, but they'll still do it because they they love their club. And then the points that all you guys have made pretty much have, have, have come back with me and said, you know. We're not. We're feeling like we're not being treated that well from from the club, um, and I, and I get the impression that that's a, a quite a large fan base, a large part of the fan base feel that way. So, but my opinion is based on the fact that I've come. In, I'm going to try and come in from the club a little bit. Nottingham Panthers, Sheffield Steelers, however way you want to put it, whether you like it or not, is a business, okay? And for them to turn around and say. For the, for, the, for, the, for the games that you've missed out on for the last um, the last five games uh, or four or five games, I think Panthers had Manchester, Cardiff, Coventry and Guildford to play. 
for them to turn around and say, right, we'll give you your season ticket holders your money back for those games, we'll work it out of a fee. The money has gone into the club that was paid for those season tickets, right? And a lot of that money, I feel, will then be um, used throughout that season. And it will also go into the, the season after. Now, no one currently knows what's going to happen with the following season, uh, when it will, whether it will start on time. Um, there's probably even a little question mark on, I don't think, I mean, I'm sure it will happen. I, I'd like to think it will happen, but you might not necessarily fit a whole season in. Um, if you want things gone to a certain date. If I was, if I'm thinking of it from a business point of view, and again, I'm not, I'm not even sure I like using the word myself, but from a business point of view, for me to give them fans that money back, are you then taking away the possibility of signing players that key players back, like uh, let's say Sam Hare, for example? Um, you're going to be giving away, let's be honest, Nottingham Panthers aren't the Toronto Maple Leafs, okay? The finance available isn't on that level. So, are we then, if, if I was to offer you as Nottingham Panthers fans, if they were to keep that money and not give refunds for those four games, but that was the difference between you keeping the likes of Sam Hare and or bringing in players of a similar standard next season, would you then say, okay, keep my money? Now, I under, before you answer, I understand that you don't feel like you've been treated as fans how you would like to be treated for various reasons. Um, like, I'm not going to say anything about that because you guys seem to hold us again, okay? Um, but if I was to give you that option and, and the club, and that's how the club is run, don't necessarily know that's how it is, but I guess it is, it, it would all go towards, some of it will go towards players in the future. What would you say to that? Um, let's start with Tyler. Well, I think there, Pete, is, is, you know, you've made some good points and it is a, it is a business, but the option which you're given is, is, is the club, be, you know, treating the fans and putting it on a level to the fans. Unfortunately, yeah. this is where the Panthers organisation don't do that. So yeah. I think if they went out and said to all their fans and balloted however they wanted to do it and say, can you just let us know what would what to do? But we need to tell you that if you do, if you take this money away from the club, it will affect the standard and the brand and the product on the ice next season. I think no one in there, no one really could could say the next season they're disappointed if they buy a season ticket and they don't get the quality of player they wanted. But I think it's all about putting it out there on a level and saying this has affected us, has affected a lot of other companies. It, you know, coronavirus, unfortunately, it's there. And that's my point, which I was raising before around your, your, your Steelers and your, your Devils, is I think yeah. they level with their fans a lot more than what we do. Yeah. By, by hearing what you're saying there and what you have said, like I say, I, I, took, that, I took that on point. And, and when we brought Joel in, obviously, with the information on the Sheffield Steelers, they, what we're saying is here is that they've led by example in a way of how you as Panthers fans would rather have been treated, putting offers on yeah. for, for yeah. more offers for tickets for games, um, more incentives for fans. Um, is that is that along the right lines? Is that what we're saying? I think the other problem is yeah. though. I think the other problem is is I think it was a bit naive of Panthers to say, and that obviously we didn't know that coronavirus was going to affect it, but to to offer a game at the end of a season as one of your games. What I don't understand why Panthers couldn't have said, your extra game is this Challenge Cup game. But no, they decided we're going to give you the first or one of the legs of the playoffs. Um, kind of, it's a very... One, obviously, we, you'd hope that Panthers would make it to the playoffs or the quarterfinals of the playoffs at least. But to say to, to fans, we're not going to give you a Challenge Cup game, we'd rather... You, you have a playoff game if we get there. Obviously, we, Panthers should make the top eight of any elite league season, but you're 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 putting that you're putting yourself on the line there from doing that, and kind of that's where your extra game come from. But also, like Ty said, Tyrone said, kind of it's we, sometimes we just feel like cash cows, kind of Panthers users and milkers to make as much money as possible. 
they don't they they don't very often do cheaper tickets there's not really that much discount for having a season ticket so the the plus side of having a season ticket at the moment isn't massive and it's not amazing it's not you don't say maybe you get four or five games for free but that's what a club has to do to get fans in and have that bulk of cash to keep this or know how much you can spend on a season um and it's the same in any sport that they you need that season ticket money to know how much you can spend that season but you have to look after the fans to get them coming back through the door um and i think the problem is is Panthers fans are their own worst enemy because we do turn up week in, week in, week out, and we put the money through the club and kind of it just it, it's took. We've been saying it for years and years that we're not being treated the best, not so, not not compared to Cardiff and New Sheffield, like Ty, Tyrone said. But so what? what but you say that, Andrew. Sorry, sorry, Pete. I was going to say, but you say that, Andrew, about the people turn up. But if we look at last season and we look at the uh, Challenge Cup, I've never seen attendance is as low. Panthers would have been losing money for them challenge cup games. So mm. I think, to be fair, this is just, an, a, not an element of cost of the club, because I would hate to say that, but I think this is another thing where your, your people who have been going for the last 15, 20 years again, if you see 50 of them reduced, for me, that, that's big, that's massive, because they were your lifeline of your club. Yeah. So it's okay, it's okay, it's turning up, but the people who have been there all the time and these people, who, you know, who have been there, they've had enough. And, and Panthers, again, for their own... And the person who does the press releases for Panthers, I don't know who that is, but they need to look at themselves and think how they decide to leave out because they're not done in constructive and the right ways. And I'll go back next season, regardless of what they do. But, and this is my you know, point. I, this, I enjoy this, watching it. This was something that I was going to just bring up. I go, there's, there's people talking about not renewing. And um, and things like that, and I don't know. I sometimes think that's a little bit quick off the mark because everyone's missing hockey at the moment. And and this is where I was going to come in about the magic five. I I, I feel surely that people we don't know when we're going to get to watch any hockey again. I think the vast majority who are dismissing this magic five would would be just welcoming of any to go and watch any hockey of any sort of standard at the arena. And and whether it's whatever game you go and see next is going to be a pre-season type hockey game because no one's going to have had any match practice. Back on, just briefly back on to the whole season ticket fiasco, would it not be easier for them to maybe turn around and say, look, an incentive of renewal? Because if you're renewing, you've had a season ticket last year where you're going to have missed four games. So the renewal price for the people from last season, could they not be given an incentive where they are not let's say, 50 quid off their next season's season ticket price. The thing is... Has that been, has that been put on... The, do we think that's been put on the table as fans who, who have been offered their yeah. season Pete, tickets? Pete, what you said earlier is... Yeah, the, 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 the truest thing you said earlier, I think, about this situation is we don't know. I mean, what goes on behind closed doors with the Panthers as a business? We're obviously not party to it, any of those discussions. We don't know what numbers are involved. And we're kind of no. second guessing what's what's going on and what decisions have been made on on what basis. I think I think they are aware of how they are perceived by the fan base. I mean, Gary Moran came out and gave that sort of uh, uh, interview, sort of I don't know, was it middle of last year or something prior to the season. So I think there is a, a kind of a, an understanding of how Panthers fans feel. So I don't think that to say that they. You know, they, they don't realise the impact of their uh, communications. I think you know, I must have some appreciation of that. But I, I just feel that we don't know the full picture. We don't know what the, the finances are. We don't know what those discussions are behind closed doors. And whatever decisions they're making, they'll be making decisions on based on good, solid business sense. Because whatever you say about them, they're running it well as a business. I think I think you're 100 percent right. And, and, and I, sorry, Tyrone, just one second. I think I think you're 100 percent right there. And and the Nottingham Panthers in this situation, which was a situation at the start of the season, which no one would have seen happening. It's not it's not just Nottingham Panthers. This is any club. But I feel like in this situation, 
they have to put themselves, I mean, you can say, oh, we'll put the fans first, but they have to consider themselves in this situation, a situation that no one seen coming last September, October, but at the start of last season. And I think for them, we're talking about, yes, we can talk about incentives that they might not have, they could have done in the previous seasons to keep the fans happy. But in the now, we're in a situation that we didn't believe that we would be in. And that's as a club, a business and the, and fans. So it's got to be, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think everyone will come out of it happy-ish. I've also seen certain things, I've eaten certain, certain things about people who have been out of work, um, made out of work because of the, the coronavirus. I mean, it's hard, like that money back, if there was a refund incentive would, would be, would be great and, and I understand that. However, on the other side of it, the Panthers aren't necessarily responsible for who's in in the job or out of out of work outside of their structure as a, as a club. So they they can't turn around and say, let's give them um, refunds and those people they can't have one. If you if do we understand what I'm saying there, I, it, it's it's very difficult and for anyone to think that it'll be easy to come out of this and please everyone would be i think pretty naive to be honest yeah i, I was i was just going to say pete is is i i think the major issue for the fans isn't around the fact that you know it's you know it's money out of this and and there are people out there who have lost jobs livelihoods and all the rest i think i think that's the issue here is you know, it's almost as if it's come out by saying, you know, if you, you, you're not getting your money back, it's going to be pre-season games and next season you can renew if you want to. But what the point I'm trying to make about looking after the fans is, is they should then think, well, actually, this has impacted them as a business, which totally they've got to also look after themselves, but they've got to think about their fans who potentially lost the job. So for me, a better option would have been, guys, we're going to give you the pre-season games. We're going to do what it is. But actually, next season, for the people who have re have renewed or are going to renew, rather than splitting it over three months, which they give it, we'll let you split your cost over 12 months. Yeah. So, for me, that would have been a much more better release to say 12 months, you pay season ticket. Because the way I see it now, for a, a number of people, is some people won't be able to renew for four kids or, you know, what, how many people oh, they've got because they can't afford it. And if yeah. they can't, if they can't if they can't pay that they lose their seats and that, that's what i say about these people who've been going year upon year upon year unfortunately this is a situation not only the panthers didn't expect but they didn't themselves you know expect yeah. so i think it's sometimes i know for them as a business that they have to think about everyone else really really because it's something very special but it's going to allow them fans to pay over a number of, of, of months to, to counteract the loss they've had as well. Um, I think that would be, that would be a really that's good idea. For, for me, it's the most important part. I, I think that would be a really good idea. And if the club did bring in something like that, that would be spot on. Um, I, want to, I do want to move on. Um, Joel, have you just got anything to add on to that? Sorry, you've not been a part. You don't have too much to say on this situation. As I say, you've not been too many games. But have you got anything to add with that? I mean, I, I get where I understand that. Obviously, then just from what Tyrone's been saying, that things aren't looking very good at Pampers at the minute. Um, I, I suck has always been a massive fan oriented. As much as you can say what you want about the sport, but the fans have always made it for me. Like the, the game wouldn't be anything without the fans and. I, you could say that for any sport, really. I, I, if 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 clubs aren't going to look after their fans, then they, they I, they're not going to do very well, are they? They're not going to last no. a long time because the fans are what make it and keep it going. Um, and I, I hope, obviously, we are in unprecedented times. So we've heard it a lot, um, and I hope everybody eventually sorts it sorts, sorts it out. Um, because we we need to no, nobody knows what's going to happen because no no one knows what what's around the corner. Yeah, I, so, mean, it's a, I mean it's a good debate that we've it's a good debate that we've had 
and I think it's a debate where there's not really a right or wrong answer. Like no one, no one here has said anything wrong. It, 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 in my opinion, I, I think it's all right and all good points. I just wanted to throw in, I wanted to throw in an opinion that might be given from someone who looks at it from an, uh, a business side of things. But then I, that, almost, I also, I also agree with the fans' perspective. Uh, it was, I mean, if we all sat here and nodded and agreed that we want, we want refunds right now, it'd be a pretty short podcast. So I just wanted to bring in that other side um, of, 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 of it for us all to just discuss. Yeah. But it, it let, I think we can all agree it's unprecedented times and um, we all need to hope that um, the, the fan bases around the hockey world um, are, are all doing okay and, and anyone that is affected, uh, we can get through it all together and we just hope that hockey comes back um, and sport comes back um, sooner rather than later. Yeah, Pete, sorry, just can I just make one last comment on that? Um, yeah. I just think this conversation, I haven't listened to the, the latest um, Cat's Whiskers um, podcast, but I bet you the same conversation's been had there and the same topics have been brought up. Uh, mm. And actually a, a shout out to Cat's Whiskers because yeah. you know, I listen to, um, you know, a Panthers Elite League uh, podcast with a lot of knowledge and expertise highly recommend listening to those guys and girls but um yeah i just reckon this, this conversation has been replicated everywhere yeah definitely, yeah, definitely. I, I've, I've seen the forums i've seen everything it's all been replicated There's, and again i've read them through and i don't think people are making wrong comments i, I think everyone's entitled to that opinion because it's such a, a weird scenario that we're in um but um, as, as Mike just mentioned there, please do go and listen to the Cats Whiskers uh, podcast date. But I know we've spoken for a little while, but for more in-depth um, post-game, pre-game, uh, Nottingham Panthers and the League League information. They've also uh, ran a show quite recently uh, where um, someone we know quite well, uh, Andy Haywood, giving his opinions on the best, uh, his favourite Panthers players and Panthers moments over the years. So they're keeping things rolling for them. It's a fantastic listen, so please do go and give that a listen. You can get it on all uh, your good podcast providers, uh, Spotify, uh, everyone. So, yeah, do that for us, please. Um, quick, quickly, uh, this week uh, we've seen Zach Fitzgerald leave the uh, Brayhead clan. Not seen anything myself as to why this happened. Um, what do we think, guys? Crazy move. You've got to, you, if you're going to bring in a new coach, you've got to give him time to build a squad. If you look at Corey Nielsen, when he was first brought in, for the, for the first couple of seasons, we didn't really click or anything. And then he signed that amazing team and we won the league. Um, and I don't think that Fitzgerald has been given a fair crack at the whip at Brayhead. The team that he had, some of the players weren't actually players that he signed. He's just He's took on players that have been given to him and he's been expected to work with them. And also, at the beginning of the season, they were doing amazing. They were running away with the league. They were winning week in, week out. And then injury hit them and then they start going further and further down the league. But I think if you're going to bring in, or if you're going to give him the job last year, then you've got to give him a couple of years to get his feet under the table. Yeah. Anyone else? We don't know the circumstances, think... do we, of why he's left? I mean, it was... No, no. Tyro? Well, I, I think that might be one of the, the major factors behind it. Is it's such a great, great start to the season. I mean, they came to, the, the, you know, to, to us and they beat us twice, Saturday and Sunday, uh, which I think took them top of the league. Since then, they just fell from grace. And I, I don't know whether that caused an issue. And like Mike says, you don't know what's happened. Um, you, you really don't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It might have happened uh, behind the scenes, which we don't know about. But from a team to, to go from, from being... A, and they played some really strong hockey that weekend as well, with the beaters back-to-back, uh, to, -back, to, to going all the way down to... Well, I mean, the season got finished. But just something just didn't seem right towards the end. They had some really good players as well. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's disappointing. Good, good, good player to, to leave the league. And, and Joel, just to finish off, mate, um, Zach Fitzgerald has been a part of um, in and around the league of Sheffield Steelers and other teams in the past. Um, what, what are your memories of him? What, have you got anything to add 
Um, what, what a, if he does? I, I'm, I can't see a way back into the league for him for next season at the moment um, as a coach. But we don't know much about other other jobs coming up. But what, what's your thoughts on on that and your memories of him as a as in the league as a Sheffield Steeler? So, see, I, I, when I was watching the Steelers, I had the season ticket for the Steelers. It was in the, the Scott Allison era, which I don't know if any of you guys have been fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know Scott Allison? Yeah, yeah. 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 He was, he, um, he went to the dark side. I know, he, he went, he went to, to, to the old Panthers side. Um, and I just remember the bust up between him and Dion Darling. Him and Dion Darling had a, a big showdown, and that and it was one of a, a very memorable. memorable. Um, but I'd, I'll never forget my first ever ice hockey game. Uh, my dad took me, it was New Year's Day uh, around 99, and there were Sheffield Steelers played Manchester Storm, and there was a bench clearance. All but every single bloke on both sides were fighting each other and I think that's what kept me going so long afterwards. Just <laughs> Okay. The massive not many, not many, not many thoughts on Just, Zach Fitzgerald then. What about who's gonna replace him? <laughs> Paul Paul Thompson's name's been thrown in the hat. Yeah. <laughs> and Doug Christensen. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Two, Two good replacements. Have back in the elite league. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what I want to do quickly to, to finish off the um, um, elite league coverage is, um, <laughs> just laughing at that, um, is I want, as Panthers fans, I've got one stealer here. Um, I want to name three players that you'd have back next season let's start off with Mike uh, well hair obviously um, for me uh, Matheson Connolly in terms of imports okay uh, obviously in terms of Brit Pearls Lacquer Whistle Tets Hazeldean Kelso Lolly you know all of those guys back but yeah imports uh, D was really strong uh, and you know I really love watching Matheson and Connolly brilliant Tyro uh, how many was it three Three, please, yeah. Wow, okay. Uh, so, yeah, Sam here. Got it. It's got to be Sam here, answer. Um, fantastic. Uh, Tucson Young uh, came in, did a cracking job. <laughs> job. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> um, and also, uh, that, that's one, but uh, Conley. Yeah. Good stuff. Andrew? Uh, Sam here. Danny Fick, I think Danny Fick, if you look at his plus minuses, very good stay at home D man. Um, and I like Tolbert. When Tolbert came in, I thought he did very well. Um, yeah, they'd be my three. And I, I, I'd, I'd go for, from another team, I'd go for CJ Mark, who came into Coventry. I thought he did very well. Luke Ferrara for me as well. Mm. Yeah. Fourth in the but points, the points score, points. In the league, I think. That's the other thing, though. Next year, you're only allowed three under 23, so Panthers are going to have to get rid of somebody. That's true. OK. Uh, and, Joel, um, I'm guessing you're looking for a return for Scott Allison. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I was actually going to pick three. Uh, Ron Shudra and we'll go Kevin Bollybrook. Brilliant. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, no, I the then. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Well, as like I say, we all hope that we get hockey back as soon as possible, so we can all get down the arena, have the same old banter, same old fun that we always do. I've, I'm, I personally, I hope I get to more games next season. So that's my that's my uh, first aim for the next season. Uh, anyone else got anything to add? Uh, before we go on to the final subject. No, we're all good. No. Nice one. Okay, so to finish off, we're going to go away from hockey uh, and we're going to delve into football. Um, so, non-league, aside from non-league, they've all called their seasons quits. 
that's it. No titles handed out, no relegation as far as I'm aware. I think that's how it's, it's been done. The professional level, however, from the Premier League down to League Two is currently, it's all a bit up in arms. I, 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 we're not quite sure what's happening. Um, we're going to start off uh, in the Premier League. Liverpool were miles ahead of everyone. Uh, we're probably going to win the league. However, what I'm asking you guys is, should they be given, should they be handed the league? And for obvious reasons, I'm going to go to Tyrone first. <laughs> right. So, um, well, I, I think, to be fair, I think when we look at, I mean, we were talking about Panthers earlier about business and stuff like that. I think for the sake of the Premiership to be the Premiership of what we know, what we love and what we enjoy, um, right now, We've lost you, Tyrone. Andrew, do you want to cut in? I think the, the only problem we're going to... I can't see them being able to, 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 to call the season as it is. I think they're going to have... Oh, no! Oh, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> The potato's working again. <laughs> so, Are we here? Hello? I think in essence, yeah, you're here. Man City you're here? should yeah. have been handed the title. <laughs> well, that's what he said. No, no. I, I mean, I was going to say, for the, for the sake of, of, of football and in terms of the premiership and, and the competition, the league can't afford to lose the amount of money if they don't finish the season. So I don't even think it, I'm not even talking about it from a Liverpool level now. I think. I think they've got to finish the season because if not, the, the quality of football, and it goes back to what we're saying, the quality of ice hockey is not going to be great going forward. Um, so I think whatever it takes to finish every league, it's got to, we've got to finish them. Um, you know, it's not ice hockey and stuff like that whereby we can just say, cut it. This is, there's a lot of money in football and if this does not happen, I think we're going to see repercussions for a, a long time going forward. So I'm just going to, before I move on to someone else, I just want to cut off not cut off the say, but I just want to mention there you spoke about money, okay? If we hand Liverpool the title, we have to relegate the three that are in the bottom three, right? So if we're talking about money, how, how, do, we, how do we look at that? Because, you know, the, the way I look at it is, I don't believe, and, and finishing, finishing the season, obviously, is still an option. We have not been told when. I think the league, the professional level, the football league and the Premier League have got a date in mind that they're going to cut off. But we don't know that yet, but I think they, they've got a date in mind. Um, any football that we now watch between now and next season is going to be like pre-season football. I can't see a scenario where we don't play the rest of the season, but we give Liverpool the title and not bring relegation into it. And non-league non non-league have, have obviously called everything quits. Let's not forget, teams in non-league will get promoted into League Two. That now, I'm guessing, can't happen. So how do, you go from, how do you go from the Premier League handing a title out and relegation and then going doing the same in League, the Championship League One, League Two, but then you're not making the, what is it, the, the, the Vanuama National League you're not making a champion there to then come up into League Two. I don't, think the, I don't think non, the, the top division of non-league have cancelled theirs yet. I think it's the bottom three. So up until the, the league that Notts County are in, they're still playing. Uh, I think it's the ones below that have stopped and cancelled the league. Okay. So, um, but Same you, goes. You, you, can't have, you can't give Liverpool the title and then not relegate the people at the bottom of the league. But then... Like you said, how do you decide who that is? Because um, if there's three or four games left and you're only three points off, then that's one win. Um, and the money, like Tyrone said, the money that's in football, to drop out of the Premiership, you're looking at £60 million. And if you decide that you're not going to relegate anybody, um, teams <coughs> in the Championship who have spent a lot of money to get into the Premiership and then have been stop from getting there because of what's happened and no relegation, then you're opening a massive can of worms for, for the courts to sort out. Um, but it's obviously 
people have paid lots of money to deal with this stuff. So. Yeah, again, that, that magic word, money, comes into it, doesn't it? Um, Joel? Yes, sir. Would you like to add, on, add to that for us? Do you have an opinion on football? Well, I, I, I'm a Sheffield Wednesday fan, so... Let's move on, then. That <laughs> <laughs> nice <to> <laughs> season was pretty much over anyway, so... But with regards to Liverpool winning the league... I think for second place. Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said there. If you give them a trophy for second place, and that would be <laughs> that'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. This is <laughs> Liverpool. Liverpool haven't won the Premier League since it, it started, and this is something that the fans have have been mocked about for for many a year. Mm. I mean, if, if someone had turned around to them at the beginning of the season and said you'll be twenty odd point you'll be twenty odd points clear, but then but then um about five games to go before the end of the season, maybe a few more and probably um there's gonna be a virus take over the world and the Premier League can be cancelled. I mean the way that their Premier League seasons have gone, they might have even believed you. Do, do you know what I mean? It it, it just seems like <laughs> if it if it doesn't if it's not going to happen this year, like how long will they be waiting when again? Will it happen? It, 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 it's a crazy. I, it, I mean, it, I mean, thank God I'm not a Liverpool fan. Put it that way, I, I, I'd be doing my nut right now, to be honest. I mean, they've not. It's not like they've not won any trophies recently. They've done brilliantly in the Europe, and but come on, this it's the Premier League, and and it, I'd I'd forever think I was cursed if. I mean. It's not mathematically impossible for Manchester City to catch them up. No, it's not. So how? So can you I, I don't that? think it would be fair. It's, I mean, it will be. It'll be I, like, yeah, I can't see. Yeah. It's it will all be unlikely that they won't lose all Manchester their games. Win every game. yeah. yeah, if Manchester City win all their games and Liverpool don't win another game, Manchester City will win the league. Now it's very highly unlikely that that will happen. But it's not totally unlikely. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's it not would still be wrong to give. It's not impossible, no. So, but I, I think on, on, that, on the I think basis, the odds were greater for Leicester. To... On the basis that we're having time to to so, say that we a season can't be cancelled, I think this is a game changer for the world of football because obviously there's quite clearly too much money in football for for for, for not being able. I mean, we've cancelled the elite league and it, it's it, it's big, but it's not it's not going to finish the elite league. Finishing from the sounds of it, the Premiership is going to cost them just short of a billion pounds. So this, it, for me, has got to be an eye opener to, to the world of football to say too much money is being handed out here because it, it's just crazy. Right. This is the other problem, though. Sorry, financial fair play comes into June, June. The end of June is when financial fair play comes into consideration and. Clubs usually try and sell their players once the season's finished. But if we're going to extend the season, you can't then sell players. Also, co contractually, they're, they're contracted until the end of the season, which is usually May time. Um, so it's got a massive knock-on effect to that as well. Yeah, OK. Mike, got anything to add, mate? Um, only well, talking about the other end of the table, really, where uh, Villa, Norwich and Bournemouth, I mean... Bournemouth would feel pretty aggrieved. I think they're level on points with uh, West Ham and Watford. So yeah. any decision like that is going to really, you know, we you just don't know without finishing in the league no. how, that could, how that could turn out. So And then that's the same all the way down the professional league, isn't it? So I think I might have discussed this when we were munching on the KFC following our Hall Rivikins mm -hmm. uh, game to a couple of years. I actually came up with a bit of an idea I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think this is going to happen. I, I don't think it will. If it does, I might make a lot of money. But, um, OK, so the idea I bought, just based on the Premier League, OK, instead of having pre-season, pre-season gets cancelled, OK? You give the teams a couple of weeks to get mm -hmm. into the training, OK, um, once the, it's lifted. OK, so to determine what happens for the next, for next season, and this is both on a financial basis, uh, sorting out who goes into Europe, who wins leagues, who gets relegated. 
you have a round robin tournament of um, I'm going to say round robin. This probably the wrong word because I think it's it's it'll be played. I'd say played at neutral venues. Uh, okay, your top it'll be, it'll be between your top six, your middle eight, and the bottom six, which makes it twenty <coughs> in the Premier League. Okay, the FA Cup final won't happen. Okay, uh, Man City already won the. Um, Man City already won the League Cup and they will finish in the Champions League spaces which then brings an extra Europe, um, a Europa League space available so your top six they all play each other once okay the winner of that of that league of six is the champion of England okay the next five your next five are all sorted out in order um they finish the tournament goal difference or whatever uh, to determine who comes in uh, the other Champions League spaces and the Europa League places. Your middle eight are playing for one thing. They're playing for the extra Europa League spot. Okay. So whoever finishes top of that will in, the, in essence be seventh in the league, in the Premier League. They'll get that extra Europa League spot that became available because Man City have won the, the uh, League Cup they're going to finish in Europe and there will be no FA Cup final. Um, your bottom six is played out in a tournament and the, basically the bottom three, the bottom three are relegated. Okay. Now I said at the start, this might be a, a, um, you play for once. If you can do it where you play for twice, home the way, then great. If we're saying that it's not important to finish the league, as unfair it might be for Liverpool, they're so far ahead. But if you want to finish something as fairly as possible, this was my way of doing it, where these teams play each other and they're playing for position, then you can hand out all the accurate finances to those teams because you get money whichever whichever position you finish in the Premier League. So you have mini tournaments, split the league up into three, have mini tournaments, and you decide it some some way like that. Because let's not forget, you've not you were meant to have European you were meant to have Euros this season this summer, and we're not having that. So let's say this lockdown gets finished uh, end of May, early June. You've then got time to have a couple of seasons, a couple of weeks of your teams back in training. And then you can have, let's say, sat, some Saturday, Wednesday, you know, you know what you know what I'm getting at. And then you can yeah. then start the following, your players are then going to be fit going into the following season. You might have to start it almost straight away, maybe delay it two or three weeks just to give them, but they're going to be fit so you can, move on to the next season that's just my because otherwise all you can do is if you finish it just like that then you're just going to have to send teams into the Champions League the same teams that are in it this season uh, And uh, but for me the biggest thing is if you can hand a title out you've got a hand relegation out as well so what's the best way of getting some more football in and deciding that I mean that's a bit that was, that was a lot of words and a lot of sentences in there, so. email you know, there get that I would be. Get yeah, that down yeah. paper and email the FA. Well, you never know. Well, you know, I, might, well I might just do that. You know, but if you, if anyone, yeah. anyone who listens to this podcast, I'd like to know your thoughts on that because that's just something I've drummed up. I mean, it, it sounds complicated, but really I don't think it is that complicated if you want yeah. to try and decide who wins the title and who goes down. Anyone got anything to add on football or anything in general? No, I just say I, we've been going about an hour and a half, so probably interest in interest of podcasting. Um, yeah, we're going to finish it now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think about wrapping up. Uh, Pete, if that's I could it. give um, a final thank you to our sponsors for the Vi Nottingham Vikings this year. Um, so uh, Nottingham legend uh, Shelley and Gavin at uh, Nottingham's number one hockey friendly pub. Uh, also Stapleford Q Club, um, premier spot for snooker and pool. Uh, Maxi Muscle, sports nutrition um, specialist, and also uh, Motor Point, so uh, some hassle free car buying. So, details on our website if you want to uh, uh, find out any more about our sponsors. But yeah, just a really, really big thank you to all of those um, guys for supporting us this season. Yeah, very important. We couldn't be, we won't be, we won't be playing without you guys with the, with the help of, of all the sponsors that we have. So, thank you to yeah. you again. Thanks for that, Mike. Um, well, that's that's it from our from our first podcast. Uh, hopefully, of many. Um, 
we hope you all give it a listen and uh, enjoy. We'll be looking for any constructive feedback, uh, what went well, what, went, what you think we can improve on. We're here for you guys and to give, give off as much information as we can. Um, it's gone a little longer than what we thought it would be, but we've, all, like, we've been involved in some deep conversations, which has been fantastic. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's all been really good. So uh, I'd just like to say uh, goodbye from me and I hope to see you again soon. Uh, we'll next podcast to, to you in the coming weeks. Um, Joel, you want to say goodbye? Thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, thanks. I'll say uh, we do. We will appreciate anybody's input. So if anybody will, like, sort of wants us to mention anything next next time, you know, just let us know, and we'll we'll, we'll try and try and get it on and uh, discuss it. But yeah, thanks for listening and goodbye from me. And Mike. Yeah, thanks a lot and goodbye. For now. Byron. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And Andrew. Yeah. Thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can, yeah. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, it's been very, very, very good. I've enjoyed it. Nice one. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. And we'll hopefully see you all very and very, very soon. Take care. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.